Hello and welcome to this webinar on 3D printing in dentistry. My name is Hilde Molvig Kopperu. In this presentation I will discuss principles and techniques of 3D printing. I will present some challenges of resin printing and also I'll discuss briefly material properties, accuracy and clinical aspects. Any photo or mentioning of specific products or materials in this presentation serve as examples and do not indicate an endorsement of the product. 3D printing is part of the digital dentistry and we talk about the digital workflow. Here is one representation of this workflow where of course multiple steps are performed. First, there is the inter intraoral scan of the patient. Next, the dentist will review and send the order of the required restoration. The dental technician will then make the design and CAD the object. And in the manufacturing step, different ways of automated production are available. This is referred to as the CAM step. Of course, there is always some post-processing and finishing to be done. And finally, the delivery is returned to the dentist. The CAD CAM steps can be done in-house, in a nearby dental technician office or abroad with a long distance international collaboration. And the manufacturing can be additive or subtractive. And in this presentation, we will discuss the additive production technique. 3D printing is an additive manufacturing technique, building the restoration layer by layer into a three-dimensional structure. Stereolithography is perhaps the most common technique uh, today and was also the first commercially available technique for 3D printing. Photo-induced polymerization of liquid resin in a tank or a vat is performed. The building can be done top-down as pictured or bottom-up which might be more common depending on the equipment design. And laser is a common source for the light and the printing is then done pixel by pixel. DLP is a similar process, which is also a photo-induced polymerization of liquid resin in a tank. However, in DLP there is a projection of light using micro-mirrors onto the full print layer in each light flash. This gives a more rapid layer-by-layer -layer printing. Photopolymer jetting is also a photo-induced polymerization of liquid resin. However, this process does not use a vat or a tank for the resin, but jets micro droplets of resin onto the build platform through inkjet print heads. The curing is done instantly using UV. One important advantage of this technique is that it may combine different resins with different shades in the print heads to create colored objects. Selective laser sintering, SLS, uses high energy laser to create sufficient temperature to induce fusion of a powder and in this way creates the three-dimensional object. The powder is often metallic and the laser heats the metal powder almost to the melting temperature, so sintering occurs. The powder may also be a ceramic, often with incorporated binders, or even a polymer, but then much less energy is required. One important advantage of selective laser sintering is that the object created may be printed in its final shape without additional supports. However, an SLS printer is quite expensive. Powder binding has little accuracy and is not a common technique in dentistry. 
the technique uses adhesive droplets jetted onto the surface of the powder to create the desired structure. Fused deposition modeling FDM is also called fused filament fabrication, triple F. The technique uses a thin filament or strand of thermoplastic polymer that is heated to softening and deposited in an additive manner to create the desired object. It is a common 3DP technique in general, but is quite coarse method and regular printers are not suited to create fine details. To summarize, several different printing techniques are available using different types of material and the choice of fabrication method will depend on the requirements for cost, quality, production speed and choice of material. In this presentation we will continue to look at 3D printing from VAT technique. Common techniques are laser, SLA or DLP and the terms are used somewhat interchangeably. Laser-based stereolithography, often just called SLA, prints the object uh, pixel by pixel, whereas digital light processing stereolithography, commonly shortened DLP, prints the object layer by layer. As far as I know, a vast majority of the available materials on the dental market are printed by a VAT technique using SLA or DLP curing. Still, there are also other methods and materials available, such as jetting techniques, which may become important for dental industry in the future. A lot of different printers are available in various sizes. They may have different dominant wavelength, 385 or 405 nanometers, and have different working areas, areas being able to produce one or more objects at the same time. The speed, accuracy and pixel size will vary between printers. However, it is important to remember that the product is not finished after the printing process, the printing will define the shape and details of the structure, but as indicated earlier, some post-processing and finishing steps are required. The first post-printing step is the removal of remaining resin from the structure in a washing procedure. This is important to keep the desired details in the object. Commercial washing equipment of various sizes are available, but standard ultrasonic baths may also be used. The washing is usually done in a mild organic solvent to dissolve the residual monomer on the surface, but not the polymerized object. The washing is usually followed by a defined drying time to remove the solvent. The final step in the 3D printing process is the post-curing. This process may take from 10 minutes up to 1 hour. The object is placed in a light chamber, usually giving a narrow spectrum of light around the polymerizing wavelengths. Post-curing can be done with or without inert gas in the chamber, depending on the manufacturer's instructions. Also, the light chambers may have possibilities for temperature adjustment when additional heating is required. Post-curing is an important step in the 3D printing process, and correct and complete post-curing is crucial for the material properties. In this preliminary investigation of a simple model material, we did a three-point bending test of the material and we looked at the situation what if we skipped the post-curing entirely, simulating a worst-case scenario. As you can see, the Young's modulus is doubled with the correct post-curing 
as compared to without the post curing, indicating that this final curing step is crucial for the material properties. This can be explained looking at the degree of conversion. The degree of conversion measures the amount of reactive double bonds in the resin that actually takes part in the polymerization. It can be measured by Raman spectroscopy as illustrated here, using a stable peak from the monomer molecule at 1610, compared to the peak of the reacting bond at 1640. We can see that the red 1640 peak after post curing uh, it is much smaller than the black curve. This illustrates that the in it, this illustrates the increased polymerization. Calculations show that the degree of cure is increased from 62 to 90 percent after post curing step. A high degree of conversion will improve the material properties such as flexural strength as shown in the previous slide. A high degree of conversion will also increase the biocompatibility of the material by lowering the amount of residual monomer. We have looked at the biocompatibility of a dental material after post-curing using different light boxes or light chambers. If we look at the right side of these graphs of the cell viability of undiluted extracts from the printed material, we can see that the post-curing in light box A results uh, is below the line drawn at 80% viability. On the other hand, post-curing in light box B gives a result above the line drawn at 80% viability and approaching 90%. We can speculate that this is due to a higher degree of conversion and therefore less residual monomer when using lightbox B. Ongoing studies at NEOM will evaluate this further. Now let's look at the accuracy of printed restorations. In this study, the influence of 3D printing parameters on fit and internal gap was evaluated. A dental model was fabricated for three unit prosthesis with two implants. Milk crowns were used as control. The prosthesis were seated on and scanned with a micro CT and the internal volume and the marginal fit was evaluated. The data showed that 45 and 60 degrees print angle gave the best results and the fit was comparable to that of milled crowns. The results were considered to be clinically acceptable. In another study, the fracture load of a three unit fixed dental prosthesis was evaluated. The printing was done with occlusal, buccal or distal bill direction. And the three unit FDP was then subjected to a three-point flexure as shown. Four different materials were included in this study and they were all methacrylate based resins. The graph shows the fracture load for the different materials and the different build directions indicated by color. The measurements were done after 21 days storage in water. In this study, it is difficult to conclude on the preferred build direction. However, the fracture loads are in the same range as for temporary composite controls, both from milling and self-cured materials. 
This indicates that uh, 3D printed FTPs have sufficient material properties after correct processing. So, some laboratory studies show that 3D printed materials will perform clinically. But how are these materials and techniques regulated? Is digital dentistry standardized? On the one hand, yes, we have several standards with requirements to the equipment for processing these materials. On the other hand, no, so far we have only a couple of standards on properties of the materials from digital techniques that will be published shortly, probably in 2022. However, the revision of other standards is a slow process. Still, we must assume that the same requirements are given to materials from digital techniques as to those from traditional manufacturing. This concludes this webinar. And finally, we would just like to remind you that NEOM offers courses and lectures on demand. And we would like you to take contact uh, on the address below if you are interested in this. 